أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا رحمة للعالمين أبي القاسم محمد والصلاة والسلام على أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها تبيلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته all praise and glory belongs to Allah, the creator of this universe, the one who has given us an opportunity by giving us life that we can share uh, the space of his creation and to be able to have the ability to know him, to love him, to uh, utilize uh, the blessings that he has given to us um, to the fullest where um, we can achieve success that is going to last us for eternity. Um, what, well, I don't know if you were there. Um, I was just writing in the board um, and just continuing in the, uh, the topic. Um, I know I had mentioned uh, quite a few things for the last four or five days, but I want to maybe spend the next two or three days try to connect the dots. So today would be probably one of those days, unless we go on some other angle. Um, so the topic of uh, taqwa, the true power of a large representative and fasting, um, there, is, there is the purpose that is to become the representative of Allah SWT. And then how to become, uh, how to achieve it, um, you know, is through developing your power, knowledge, hearing, seeing, being true, truly alive, love, and compassion and mercy. So how to achieve um, this particular purpose, uh, some of the qualities that we need. And then Allah SWT has given us some tools as well. So you have your body, you have your mind and your heart. Um, in your body, you have your five senses, you have the brain, you have the different body parts. In the mind, you have your conscious mind, subconscious mind, imagination, creativity. Um, and then on your heart, you have your lower emotions, higher emotions, uh, sight, hearing, and marifa, right? So if we, if we can divide the topic into, let's say, you know, these three categories and try to explain, uh, I think for the last four or five days, whatever we have uh, sort of learned, we can try to connect it, okay? So the, the first one where we say that, you know, the purpose um, is to become the presenter of Allah SWT. Why does Allah SWT need representation, right? Um, he is everywhere. There is no uh, space in this universe that is empty. Um, in the sense empty, in the sense that um, there is no space in the universe which is empty of his creation, right? So everything that Allah, Allah has created is occupying this sort of space. Um, and the presentation of Allah is required not just on this earth, but for the whole universe and multiverses. You need a representative when someone is not present, right? Uh, if there's an ambassador who represents the country, it's because, let's say, the prime minister or the president is not uh, available, therefore the ambassador is going to represent, right? Um, or let's say you make someone as your representative to go and deliver a message uh, or do something, uh, you give the power of attorney to that person, because you cannot be present there, therefore you have a representative, right? But when we 
uh, we know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He's everywhere, right? Because He's everywhere, there is no place in the universe where He is not there. So as far as presence is concerned, He is everywhere, right? So why would you need a representative for someone who's everywhere, right? So it's not about presence or not being present, right? Now, when you look at the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everything is receiving uh, whatever that they have, they're receiving um, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So there is nothing in this creation that is independent. The only independent existence is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So everything else that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created is dependent. They're dependent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, everyone is going to get, all the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to receive everything, right? So now you can also come up with, okay, so if he is the one who is independent and he's the one who's giving everything to everybody, then why do you need someone else to give something on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And the other, uh, the third thing could be that, you know, um, everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created also has um, awareness, right? Um, or is alive, right? Uh, you fi wa is one of those principles, one of those core uh, laws that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in the Holy Quran that everything is doing the glorification and the, the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In order for anything to do glorification or praise, you need choice, you need uh, understanding or intellect, uh, you need emotions, you need love, right? Uh, if you don't have those things, you cannot praise someone, right? So everything that Allah SWT has created is alive. Everything has a choice. Everything has some form of understanding or intellect about Allah SWT. And everybody, everything uh, feels a sort of pull or inclination or love for Allah SWT. Right? So when it is such, why do you need a representative? So because of those questions that might arise, if you just think about this statement that to become the representative of Allah SWT for the creations of Allah that can't see or understand to the level that a perfect human being can, right? So everything that he has created does not have the same capacity or ability or potential to be able to connect to Allah SWT, to be able to know Allah SWT, to be able to um, um, you know, understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to uh, have um, um, the, the, uh, the, the connection based on love. They don't have the capacity, right? And this interaction between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the creation requires something, right, that has the, all of the capabilities or abilities the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that need to be projected or become the source for the rest of the creation. So that this, this representative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can interact, right? Can interact uh, through the source of power, of mercy, of love, of knowledge, all of the qualities, through this source coming having that capacity, right, having that ability, having that potential to then connect to the rest of the creations. That through this being, the rest of the creations who are dependent are able to benefit um, the utmost, you know, uh, from, the, from the source, which is Allah SWT. Okay. So, um, the perfect human being becomes that sort of uh, medium. I won't say mediatory, right? Uh, I won't say that. I would say medium, okay? I can give you some examples too. Um, so the, the water that runs in your house, right? Like you can open the tap and you get it. If you look at the source of that water, um, you know, it, it's, it's coming... 
uh, the, the rain came down, it collected somewhere in a lake or a reservoir. Um, and then um, there was a, a facility that purified it. And then from purif purified it, because you, you cannot handle the impurities in that water. Although, like for example, a tree can, the rest of the creation of Allah SWT can, but you can't. So the, the impurities are, are taken out, the water has become suitable for you. And then through the cleansing of the water, then there is a system where, you know, it's going to go through the pipes and then you're going to be able to receive it in your house, right? So the water has a source, but you don't have, let's say, the ability or the capacity, or you don't have the opportunity to be able to go directly to the source to be able to benefit, right? Because you need shelter, you need, uh, you know, we have, we need cities, we need houses, um, and we are away from the source. So there is a whole network that becomes means, uh, not intermediary, but means for us to be able to have water, which is our lifeline, right? So if you look at the way Allah SWT has created, he, he is the ultimate source. But he brings that source, everything through that source, through mediums, right? And the reason for mediums are there is because of the capacity of the creations of Allah SWT. Because of that capacity, these mediums, they they become interconnected to be able to provide what is required from the source to the rest of uh, creation. Okay. So a tree is not able to connect to Allah SWT in a way that, uh, for example, uh, you and I can, because we have the potential to become the representative of Allah SWT. <coughs> so now, how can the tree connect? Right? How can the tree connect to that same particular level of potential or capability or power that you and I have? Well, um, when we use the tree for our houses or for other purposes, when we use the wood from the tree, and we have to use it, uh, you know, with the with the co God consciousness. If we had used it with God consciousness, we would not have the environment in the perils in the difficulty that it is today, right? But if, so once you utilize that, you utilize the tree or you utilize the natural resources on this earth, right? And you have to understand this is a closed system, right? Um, so your bodies are there, then we die. These bodies are placed in the dirt. Uh, from that, uh, the bodies deteriorate. There are uh, millions or trillions of uh, creations of Allah SWT that uh, deteriorates the body. It goes, the nutrients go back into the earth. And then from that earth, the nutrients are transferred into the grass, into the trees, into uh, the, the rest of uh, uh, the, the rest of the creation. And then somewhere down the line, these nutrients again uh, are utilized to make a physical body. And then this physical body goes through deterioration again, and then it goes through the same cycle. And then again, this physical body uh, is, is, um, is, is, you know, uh, is made, right? Same thing with the apples as well. Same thing with the rest of the things that are three dimensions or carbon based that are in this closed system called earth. They keep on getting through this process of breakdown and then regeneration, breakdown and regeneration. I mean, if you look at the water, it's the same water that uh, the dinosaurs drank from, right? It's the same water uh, that uh, for, uh, for 4 billion years has existed on this earth. And it doesn't go anywhere. The atmosphere is a closed system. The water gets evaporated. The atmosphere is a ceiling. It closes. It doesn't let it go into the space. It comes down again. And the whole water cycle continues, right? So in this closed system, uh, things that are three-dimensional or carbon-based or physical, uh, to our perception, but there are other angles as well when you start looking at energy, vibration, and frequency, they keep on going through this cycle of deterioration, regeneration, deterioration, regeneration. So now you have this being here who has a, a suit 
made up of carbon, right? Uh, made up of the three dimensions, made up of the same material as this earth, right? This body of yours. And this being not only has um, just deterioration and regeneration, but it also has a connection to the divine, to the source, right? And this connection goes all the way up, all the way up to the point where no other creation of Allah SWT can get to, right? So you can think of uh, maybe the human beings as the elevator, where the tree or the, or the stones or uh, the rest of the creations of Allah SWT, direct or indirectly, can connect to this elevator, and then through that elevator can reach that place where they could not on their own, right? So the opportunity for the rest of the creations is through this medium uh, that we as human beings to be able to get to the level that they cannot. They just don't have the capacity for it. Although they have choice, although they have mm, shaur, they have intellect. And even now today, the science is saying that uh, they even animals have imagination, right? Uh, they can imagine things, they dream, right? Um, they have emotions. Uh, the emotions are on, on a lower scale, but they have emotions. Um, they have the ability to decipher uh, things, uh, the ability to learn new things, right? And uh, even they have um, uh, the, the, the ability to recognize uh, this representative of Allah SWT. Right? Like if you look at Hazrat Sulaiman um, he was recognized by the creations of Allah SWT. He was able to communicate with the creations of Allah SWT. I mean, you have the, the event where uh, the ant, uh, the general of the army of ants, recognized Hazrat Sulaiman And he told uh, his army that, you know, he's coming. Right, so the ant had the ability to be able to recognize the representative of Allah SWT, was able to communicate that to the army who understood that. If they could not understood, if the ants could not understood what the general is saying, why would he say some? Why would he even tell them? It would be of no use. But they they also had the ability to recognize, right? And then when you come to uh, I'm a Muslim and I'm a Muslim. We have many different events where they're communicating uh, with the animals and the animals are recognizing their status of a representative of Allah SWT. You know, they, um, are, you have Imam Radha Islam, who's also called Dhamini Ahu. Uh, Dhamini Ahu basically means the protector of the deer, right? Where you have this event where Imam is sitting down with his friends and uh, a deer passes by and one of the a close friends of Imam Raza threw a stick at the deer. And Imam Raza said to him that, you know, we are not going to be friends anymore. Uh, and the person was like, why Imam? And he said that, you know, this deer wanted to cross over and was afraid. And I gave him the protection that don't worry, no one's going to harm you. And you, uh, you know, um, uh, scared this deer. So th there are many lessons in that story is that when you are in the presence of the representative of Allah SWT, uh, when you are in the presence of the Imam of the time, e even anything, even as mundane as, uh, you might think is as mundane as throwing a stick uh, to a deer, you, you cannot do that, right? Uh, you have to be in complete sort of, sort of submission or loyalty or not even move without the permission of your master, right? Yeah, because you don't know on which level the imam of the time is communicating with the environment, right? So you have uh, the sixth imam, um, uh, you know, uh, one of the person came and asked, uh, what is the sign of a mu'min? The sixth imam said, the sign of a mu'min is if he calls upon the tree, the tree comes over, right? And as the imam explained, one of the tree came over. Now, how the person saw it was probably not in the physical three-dimensional carbon-based tree walking over. It was the other existence that the tree has, which is more of a barzakhi or, uh, you know, 
sort of just me misali or um you know, same sort of image that we see in our dreams so he saw the actual tree that you know just the way the tree looks like coming over to the imam right not the physical three dimensional one but because everything else also has another existence uh which is uh etheric or you can say it's it's uh it's sort of the same way as what when, when we dream in our dream we can see trees we can see ocean we can see everything that we see in in our waking uh and it, those things actually do exist in another dimension uh the same way as they exist here with the same shape and form and um now the the discussion will go somewhere else but when this tree came over imam said you know i did not call you i was just explaining to him you can go back to your place the tree can recognize you if you're a mu'min or not right when you go for knowledge the the uh, the fish in the ocean recognize that you're going for knowledge right because the communication is happening not just on the carbon based three dimension but the communication between the universe and you and everything else is happening on many different levels right and all of these different levels the communication that is happening we just not we're just not aware of it we can become aware of it but we're not like these fish are are praying for you they're asking for forgiveness for you right why because they know that this is a person who's going to utilize you know the tools that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given uh to him to be able to uh get to that place of representation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when this representative when he becomes a representative it will be for us like an elevator that we have shared the space with this being we have become the source of nutrition for his body right um we have provided our lives uh, in service or servitude to this being so that through him right through his medium we can achieve that level that we could not uh, without this representation a representative of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right you have the earth uh, speaking uh, saying that you know when when someone is uh, walking uh, as as a righteous and pious being uh, the earth is happy right um so there there's so many things in traditions that will connect to this idea that we as human beings have the ability have the capacity have all of the tools that are necessary the guidance necessary for us to take the whole creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right to the closeness that cannot be achieved by the rest of the creation and that as a representative of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the rest of the creation becomes in your servitude they become your servants they they give you everything so that you can accomplish this task look at the environment how it has provided everything for us right how uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided this environment but this environment is also doing at a certain level consciously they're not just robots the the, the trees are not just robots or uh, the the earth is not just a robot or animals are not just robots or it's robots or robot or the, the rain coming down is not just a robot all of the whole of the universe is actually conscious it's alive it's not dead it's alive the 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 akiks that we wear the stones that we wear they are here's protection for us they're protecting us right from so many different things they are they are doing the salawat they are asking for forgiveness and just because we cannot uh, perceive that that doesn't mean it's not there we have been told that they do that and you can also perceive it too you can you can get to the place where you can perceive how this aqeeq is doing tasbih or how this aqeeq is asking for forgiveness for you or how this aqeeq is protecting you from the different sort of uh uh waves or energies that are coming towards you right and and then 
um, like if you if you take a, there's an, a, a negative ion meter that you can buy you can buy it online as well um, and this negative ion meter can tell you um, if you place it on it let's say you place a cake on it or you place um, anything on it it will tell you how many negative ions it is emitting right and negative ions are actually uh, good for you right uh, I know I know the word negative doesn't uh, we don't take it in the sense of good, but the negative ions is um, when an, an, an atom loses electrons, it becomes positively charged and it becomes weak, right? So then it seeks another atom that has more electrons, it's negatively charged. So it can take, when it gets close to it, the negative ions, or sorry, the, the electrons, they jump and they get into the other atom. And now, uh, if, the, if the other atom had more electrons and it could give to the other atom that does not have the electrons, right, then uh, the, the two electrons are still, the two atoms are still negatively charged, but the one that was positively charged now becomes negatively charged and becomes strong again. So these, uh, the, these stones, they're emitting those negative ions that the harmful effect of for example, you sitting in front of a screen or a computer or electricity running in our walls are producing positive ions. And by having this, uh, it, 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 uh, when, when the positive ions come to take, uh, um, you know, electrons from you, the, um, the, uh, the akik or the stones, they become as a protection from you and the positive ion ends up taking the electron from your akik or from your from your uh, ferosa, and it does not take the energy or the it doesn't make you weak. It doesn't ruin your health, right? So that's protection, right? But when when the Holy Prophet told us or the I'm a Muslim, some told us that these things will protect you. You know, some people will end up saying, "Oh, it's just uh, that it's not there. It's just superstition. It's just." Uh, you know, people have made up, it's irrational. But when you look at the science and as it as science develops and it goes through different discoveries and, uh, you know, you, you, it's able to recognize that, you know, what the Holy Prophet said is actually true. What Ayma Masumi Nalam said is actually true. It might have taken it 1,400 years. It might take another 1,400 years or a million years. But it as it develops, as it's become free, as you know, as uh, for example, Tesla had said that when we start looking at the universe as energy and vibration and frequency, if the scientists were to place their uh, research for 10 years in that, we would go 100 years in, the, in our development. Our science will develop what it would, it would have developed in 100 years, it would develop in 10 years. And when you have the Holy Prophet and I'm a Muslim, who are giving us the guidance from the source, which you and I don't have the uh, access to, as the Holy Prophet does. Therefore, he's a representative to us uh, of Allah SWT, right? Because you and I cannot get the revelation, right? We, uh, we don't have the capacity for it. Not that he wasn't asked, right? Before we came into this world, everybody was asked, what do you, what, what do you want? Right? Do, you, do you want to have the burden of receiving the revelation uh, and guiding the human beings and suffering throughout your whole life and uh, having your, um, uh, your progeny uh, uh, cut up, uh, put into prison uh, for their rights not to be given, right? for, for them to be... Um, persecuted and, and and all of us we were given that opportunity and we didn't accept the, the holy prophet did therefore he is a representative of Allah SWT, or I'm a Muslim and I'm a representative of Allah SWT to us so this representation of Allah SWT is like a chain it continues right it's it's part of the system it's part of the system that everything is coming from the source and everything is going to be distributed through mediums, right? 
So to a certain degree or a level, you can represent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, you know, to, to, to his creations, whomever you're interacting with, whomever you are using as a, as a resource, right? You can represent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So um, uh, that was, this is the purpose. And if, if this makes sense, uh, you, and think about it, right? Uh, you will come to the, this conclusion. And so how to achieve it? Um, through developing, you know, these sort of uh, qualities. And these qualities are the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are uh, seven qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, are, are, the, are the, called the source qualities, or they're also called the, 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 um, the, the mother of the qualities, right? meaning the source, that they are the most predominant ones. They are the ones that are closer to the source. And through that, the rest of the qualities of Allah SWT uh, are, um, are, are projected or are given right? or are delivered or are utilized. Right? So one of the qualities of Allah SWT is power. Right? That power is, is the, the source uh, quality. Right? That the rest of if you're not powerful, you cannot be mercy. You cannot be merciful. You cannot be uh, loving. You cannot be uh, compassionate. You cannot create. You cannot uh, maintain uh, a system. Right? Allah SWT is maintaining this whole system of His creation. Right? So power is one. Knowledge is one. Hearing and seeing uh, are other. Uh, being truly alive. The life that Allah SWT has, or when we say his height, is not like our life. Our life, we were not present at one point and then we were present, uh, we were made alive. But the life that Allah SWT, or height, the quality of Allah SWT, is, is, uh, is without time or space, is before anything was created, uh, before even the light of the Holy Prophet and I'm a Muslim and so on. Right? But uh, being truly alive, we, we, um, um, we might be dead. Uh, we have to become alive. Like the person who cannot submit in front of the truth, the, sub the person who cannot receive the guidance, the person who uh, cannot follow the tenets of Islam, the person who cannot worship Allah SWT, the person who cannot remember Allah SWT, the person who cannot do Amr bin Maruf and Munkar, that person is dead. So this dead person cannot do anything. So we need to become alive and we need to have our love uh, and, and compassion and mercy. So out of these, you can see that uh, to be able to get all of this, this, this quality would have to be, uh, is, is the most important one, right? And that's why we're relating this quality to taqwa, right? Because this is what we, we need to develop. And um, how to develop that, we have uh, the tools that Allah SWT has given to us, right? So you have in your body, you have your five senses, which you can uh, sort of perceive the environment around you. Your skin has all of these sorts of receptors uh, that uh, collects the data um, and then gives it to the brain and then uh, through the brain, you get it it's in your mind and you're able to perceive the environment around you, right, through your five senses. Um, then uh, you have the different body parts that work holistically to be able to process this information uh, to maintain uh, your body. So the environment that you perceive and then with the brain that is encompassed in all darkness, right, like the skull is, uh, you don't know light gets there. Other than what, and that's also a discussion how the retina is able to process uh, the, 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 the light. But it's like encompassing darkness, it's encompassing a skeleton, you know, it's, it's swimming in a liquid, and it doesn't know anything. And it relies on the, the, the five senses to be able to tell it uh, whether there is a threat, whether there is something which is beneficial, whether there is something that's harmful, whether there is a, uh, this is a tree, whether this is, you know, uh, 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 this is a, a food, um, you know. So 
the brain is relying on those five senses to be able to give it the signals. And then once the signals are received, then it processes the, the information, uh, gives it to the mind, <coughs> which is sort of metaphysical. It's not really uh, carbon based. It's not really even bound by time and space. And then this mind with the subconscious and conscious, um, it tells the brain, okay, this is what it is now, right? Uh, so uh, you're now experiencing love. Because you're experiencing love, then the brain is going to secrete the uh, dopamine and the endorphins, um, uh, you know, uh, serotonin, um, you know, it's going to secrete those chemicals that they're going to go in your blood and then it's going to go through your whole body and it's, uh, you know, it, it's going to make you feel uh, uh, love. Uh, it's going to make you feel good. It's, it's, it's going to have your um, parasympathetic nervous system kick in where heart rate is going to slow down. Uh, the, the immune system is going to become stronger. Um, your, your digestion is going to become better. Um, your BP is going to go down. Uh, you'll be able to process the sugar uh, really well in your pancreas. So love actually is really good for you. It, it, it's good for your uh, mind. It's good for your health. It's good for your body, right? Um, and the more love you feel and the higher this love is, the better your body uh, is maintained, the stronger your body gets. So all of these things, they interact uh, together. They're not separate from each other. They actually interact together to be able to uh, give you all of the resources so that you can uh, develop this power. So in your mind, you also have the imagination, your creativity. In the heart, you have your lower emotions. And I mentioned to you, the lower emotions are, uh, you know, are, are, are sort of uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this knowledge through encoding in our existence uh, of what is, um, you know, uh, what will take you towards righteousness or power and what will uh, take you towards weakness, uh, right? Uh, towards sin. So sin is weakness, obedience is power, right? So um, the lower emotions are the encoded um, in our uh, nafs that, you know, um, will, uh, will, will, uh, will, will get us towards this weakness if we don't uh, use our other side, right? So that's the struggle, right? It's like having water and fire and bringing them so close together that you connect them, you connect the two and you connect the two in a way that the fire shouldn't uh, be extinguished by the water and the water should not get warm by the fire, right? So to have that sort of exact equilibrium of these two opposites, right? To have the opposite, two opposites, your, your metaphysical side, right? And your physical side, your most dense side and your most free side, right? Without shape and form. You bring the two together and in such an equilibrium that they both can stay connected without actually uh, 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 affecting the other in a way that doesn't exist, right? Who, who can do this, right? It, it's Allah SWT has given you that creation, right? He, he has given you that ability. The rest of the creations don't have that. None of the creations of Allah SWT has his soul. We do. Everything has a soul. Everything has a metaphysical side, right? That's non-three-dimensional. But none of the things have the soul of Allah SWT. And if there were no other souls, why did he say my soul, right? So th that means is that there is a metaphysical side of everything that we put into the quote-unquote folder of soul, right? 
out of that, that metaphysical existence, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala chose you to give him to give you that metaphysical existence, which he associates with himself as being one that is out of love, the other is out of honor, and the third is because of the capacity, of the ability, right? and then also he gave you uh, this three-dimensional carbon-based dense body you know that is probably the weakest it is the weakest among all of the carbon-based bodies the ant is stronger than you and I uh, than, than this carbon base right the ant being so tiny can lift up you know some one place I, I, I read 5,000 times so let's let's not go into 5,000 time, times the, its weight but even a hundred times its weight, right? So if you happen to be, I know I, I think in pounds, but I know you, you, you calculate your weight in stones or, but let's say whatever, I'll just say in pounds because I'm not good at very good at math, um, which it, it, I can change that. But um, So hundred, let's say, get, you know, your a person happens to be a hundred pounds just for simple math. If they were as strong as the ant, they could lift up 100 times their weight, right? So 100 times 100 is what, 10,000, 10, right? Yeah, something like that. So they could lift up, uh, you know, 100 times, uh, yeah, it's I think around 10,000, 10,000 pounds, right? So, as far as our, our body is concerned, the, the, we have the lowest amount of instinct, knowledge of instinct, right? Um, we have um, the, um, the immune system, which is probably the weakest in, in the creation of Allah SWT, right? The alligator or, or the reptilians, uh, they have uh, 11 times a stronger immune system uh, than you do or I do, right? Uh, the sense of smell, even in our five senses, uh, the animals also have five senses, uh, but their five senses are so sharp, right? And now it's not that we cannot increase in our five senses, but I'm just, whatever our paradigm is, I'm giving you information through that. The sense of smell, the sense of taste, the animals have much, much stronger hearing, right? Sight, right? So here you have in a closed atmosphere, close environment, uh, someone who is the weakest, right? most dense, and that being is now connected with something which is metaphysical, the strongest in the universe, right? and has been given the task to bring these two in an equilibrium that it can represent the ones that are in the dense form, okay, made up of carbon, this earth, and also as the different levels of existence uh, exist, to also represent Allah SWT in those levels. Okay. That's an amazing task. That's, that's a lot of power, the potential, right? Uh, the Holy Prophet is Rahmatullah Alameen. He is the source of mercy for multiverses, right? So you believe in Rahmatullah Alameen, you have him as your Uswai Hasana, right? You see how uh, we have let go of our true purpose and what we're utilizing these tools for, right? To build up a system of base of debt and interest of, you know, the world of social media or uh, the world of YouTube or the world of just comfort and sort of quote-unquote technological advancement, which all of this, these tools that we've utilized, instead of becoming the source as a representative of Allah SWT for the rest of the creation, we have ruined them. We have ruined our own selves. Right? We, we, we've, we've become prejudiced, we've become arrogant, we've become bigots, we have uh, separated ourselves. We don't care what is happening to our neighbors. We don't 
care of what's happening in this world, you know, who's dying, who's not dying. We're just concerned about this number one, just yourself. And then whatever else, you know, forget about it. You don't have to do anything, you know, just live your life and go through the rut of life and then, you know, die. But, so, I'm not sure what the time is now. So, uh, you know, recognize your task. And, you know, learn. And um, uh, fasting is supposed to um, <laughs> help us in getting the power. Uh, the body gets cleansed, right? Detoxed. The brain gets slow, right? And so you're able to become more aware. The rest of the body parts get a bit of a break. Now your stomach gets a bit of a break. Your heart gets a bit of a break. Your pancreas get a break. Uh, your liver gets a break. Although if you become angry, then it doesn't. But um, in your mind, uh, your conscious mind becomes a little bit more clear. Uh, you have the opportunity now to tap into your subconscious. And I know uh, we said that we're going to go talk about how to reprogram your subconscious mind. Uh, your lower emotions, they, they get suppressed, right? Because generally your lower emotions are triggered by overeating, by oversleeping, by having uh, uh, more desire, uh, by uh, all of these processes, the lower emotions get more activated. Uh, when you're fasting, uh, you have more of the higher emotions. That's why, um, you know, like love, compassion, empathy. That's why in the month of uh, Ramadan, people become more charitable. They get, they are more, uh, they connect to others more. Uh, they uh, go, they have more ability to do worship. Their namazi get avalivakt, right? They are able to finish Quran. Uh, they have, uh, um, you know, so many different benefits that come from the, uh, from fasting, right? And then um, once you look at um, uh, when, once, when you understand that, then, of course, the statement of Allah SWT that I have ordained the fast for you so that some of you can become powerful, right? Inshallah, uh, there's a lot more, um, but, you know, if, if, I, if I explain to you things with different angles, is, is the reason is that, you know, it's not that it's... It's not that the guidance of Allah SWT doesn't have the answers or solution. The problem has always been our understanding of this guidance. If we can become, if we can start seeing things more with different angles, with different perspectives from the metaphysical and the physical, you know, and we can start connecting the dots and uh, looking at it not from one angle, a namaz from one angle, or fasting from one angle, or Quran from one angle, but because there are infinite number of angles. And the more we're able to see through different angles, the more we will be able to understand this guidance. Right? And our understanding has been the main problem. You know, and because of that, uh, we have divisions among our own selves, we have divisions within human beings, you know. All of our source ends up being this wrong understanding, right? So the more, the more, let's say you, I could, uh, we can try to explain this guidance of Allah SWT through energy, through frequency, through vibration, right? Like Tesla was saying that if you were to put in the uh, if the scientists were to put in the effort for 10 years, looking at the universe's energy, vibration, and frequency, we would go 100 years forward in our development. What if it also holds true the way we see the creation of Allah SWT? As a Muslim, what if we can also take the, the concept of energy, vibration, and frequency and use that as another angle to be able to understand the traditions of the Holy Prophet, right? The verses of the Holy Quran, right? 
the, the traditions of Ahlul Bayt al -Muslim. But if you could use those angles and then figure out what is the vibration frequency of Surah Al-Hamd and how this vibration frequency affects our vibration frequency on the level of the, the body, on the level of mind, on the level of heart, right? We will have another perspective. How Surah Al-Hamd vibration frequency, if it is correlated with the, the perfect human being, if it's correlated with that, then this frequency becomes so powerful that it can even bring a dead person back to life. Right? Or uh, it can cure any illness. Right? If we had actually looked at, upon uh, perhaps uh, the guidance of Allah SWT that way, we would have become so strong that, you know, this sort of the pandemic they were in, all, all of the different diseases that come along, maybe we would have been so strong that just by us reciting Surah Alhamd, we would have cured our uh, uh, our body. We would have gone to our neighbors instead of, you know, um, being afraid to go out to our neighbors or to our relatives if we were that strong. And I'm not saying that you do that, right? Because we haven't achieved that. We still, this, this, what I'm telling you is still foreign ideas to you. It's just still some people, it's always too much science. It doesn't, you know, it, or I can't understand it. It's just too deep or whatever. But if, if, if we had gotten to that, right? And we would have just read Surah Alhamdulillah on that person and they would have been cured. There would have been no lockdown. There would have been no quarantine. There would have been no... 30 or 35 countries of the world going bankrupt, right? there would have been none of that. Right? And I'll leave you with this thought. Um, I might have narrated this to you before. Uh, the sixth Imam, um, al was walking and on the path, uh, there uh, uh, sat a lion. And <coughs> The Imam was walking with some people, some of his uh, companions or friends or associates or people who were with him. And they were all scared. There's, like on the path, there is a lion sitting there. And they're watching it and they're, like, you know, they're thinking, well, let's uh, change the route or, you know, run. And the sixth Imam, very calmly and quietly, goes to the lion, grabs the lion from its ear and, you know, moves it. And the lion stands up and moves out of the way and goes away. I would say what a blessed lion had the opportunity for a representative of Allah Mother coming so close that the hand of the representative of Allah touched him. But uh, <laughs> the people uh, became very uh, astonished or they were very surprised and they um, you know the imam said to them he said that you know if human beings could have taqwa they would have ridden on this animal right instead of being afraid they would have ridden on this animal that Lion would be so submissive to that person, to human beings, that it will offer itself as an animal that you can ride on. Right? So, inshallah, if Allah SWT blesses, we'll continue and try to uh, go back as well. I know my, my lessons are too here and there, and I'm no good, but. Uh, inshallah, I'm trying to be become better. But if you can connect the dots in the previous lessons, 
uh, this picture will start becoming more mm-hmm. clear for you about the concept of power and representation of Allah SWT and how fasting can help us. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim um, al-Asr inna l-insana lafi khusr illa l-lazina amunu wa aminu salihat wa tabashad wa haq wa tabashad